So this is the X2, I think that's how you say it, solar nature camera. And to be honest, I think the only thing you need to know about this is it's 40 quid. 40 quid. Got it out of the box and I was like, well, oh, this, this thing looks cool. It's kind of rugged, looks like you could smash it around a bit and it would take it. Solar panels stuck to the top, so you haven't got any annoying pivoty brackets. Looks like it's got lots of, I'll go over the specs later, but my initial thought was it looks like it's got lots of little lights on the front. Sensor looks big. I was like, yeah. I didn't really know the price at the time because when I looked on the internet, it was $60. And I thought, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and I'll go over why it's a bit cheaper later on. There's also some batteries to get, so it's not quite 40 quid. Um, and then I opened the back up, had a look in, and I thought it was just going to be like, sensors and stuff and there's a, there's a screen in there and I was like well this is cheap and it's got a screen and it's got buttons like this is getting better and then I turned it on and then I had a look at the footage and I was like okay okay this thing is like I'm sure you can get better but I think like I said before unless you're a really really keen hunter or you're really really into this stuff you don't want to spend a lot of money on one of these do you you just want to get one for as cheap as you can get and I think less than 40 quid you're in the realms of is it really going to work i think you want to spend a certain amount because it is a camera it does have an infrared sensor it does have a motion detection so if you go too cheap you're going to end up with something that doesn't work so you want to spend enough to make sure it works and i wouldn't have said 40 quid was enough i would have said you know if you said how much you're going to spend on a trail camera i'd have been like maybe 100 quid would get you a pretty serious one wouldn't it like well, you know you'd be like i could rely on 100 quid but if you said less than 80 i'd be like i don't think that's going to do the job but i've been using it for a few weeks i've got some footage and as you can probably tell already I'm, I'm really impressed with this thing they have sent it to me for free um, i think they saw our last video on the other trail camera that i did that was 250 quid and they said, hey, do you want I think I may have even put a screenshot of this in there saying, oh, this is one I haven't tried out. So they sent it to me and said, I had a go. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, it's good. It flies everywhere. I think we'll run through a quick setup first. Like how do you set it up? Uh, and then we'll have a look at the specs. We'll review the footage that I've already got and then go over concluding thoughts. If you don't know them already. Ken from Tabard has sent me all these um, midge repellent stuff, so I've been using that for a couple of weeks now. So I think we're going to do a video on how this, you know, an in-depth video of how, how this kind of stuff works. And um, I was just covering myself, trying to keep these midges away. All right, so the setup is you just, like it's got two different modes. So you go into the middle, oh, turn it on, and it just pops on like that. And then you've got your setup here. I think when you open it up, you've got to actually run through languages and stuff, but you can set video settings. Um, just click that. And you can go through video resolution. I've said it's 4K and I've actually tested this because I thought, you know, the adverts they say on it, the kind of high resolution, you're like, yeah, but it's not going to be 4K, is it? I actually checked the footage resolution on my um, desktop and it is 4K. So. Um, and that's 4K night video, so it really does do 4K. It's not making that up. Recording length. So I've put it at a minute, and can you go more than a minute? Oh, you can. So I did a minute, and actually I wish I had done um, a bit more than a minute because it's not going to use up that much of your SIM. Um, it takes micro SD, this thing, so it's not going to use that much of it, but I ended up needing a bit more, I think. It records audio, the volume... Oh, hang on, we can go in there and go to settings. Put it on video. The trigger interval. So it's, actually I think it's a photo because the, yeah, that's the settings. So the trigger trigger interval here is actually 0 0.2 second, two, not point, yeah, 0 0.2 seconds. And I did discover in the last one, as I think you, by the way, if you, you know, hunting, you need to get yourself one of these. That's deadly. Um, I did find in the last, the last one that we needed a faster response time because we were getting the back end of all the animals. 
Um, and this one at 0.2 seconds, it, it has managed to capture everything early enough that we've got the full, the full feature, if you like, of the animal. So that's, yeah, that's a big difference. So it takes SD card, micro SD card, Let's get this out. which it comes with branded 32 gigabytes. That's really good. That's really good because you don't always have one. It's USB-C charging and it charges the batteries in here. Now this is one thing is that it doesn't come, it doesn't come with batteries. So you have to purchase the batteries and they're not normal batteries. It said AA, and then when I looked into it, it's not AA, it's 1.5 volt AA lithium ion, which is a different battery to um, what you've probably just got laying around in the house. So I went on to Amazon, I purchased these and um, they were 20 quid. So it does bring the price of the whole camera up to 60 quid, but so there is that, there is the fact that it doesn't come with the batteries, but that's better than there being a battery back bank built in here I think because you're not going to use this every day of the year maybe you will I don't know I mean you could but the <clears throat> like if you paid for a battery bank in this you could never take those batteries out and use them in something else so by them keeping the camera price cheap and then you buy your own batteries it means that if you decide you don't want to use your trail camera for a couple of weeks and you want to pull those batteries out and use them in another project you can it's like you own the batteries and you own the camera. So I would say as a decision, that's the right decision to go because you've got the flexibility and you haven't just got a fixed battery locked into this. So, and it makes it cheaper for you, doesn't it? You know, you, if you've got some lying around already, you can just use those and the, the entry price is cheaper. So I think that's the right move. I had this sat for about a week, maybe two weeks in the worst possible location. You remember the last video when we took it up there and we put it under the pine forest, just um, no sun almost at all. Had this over two weeks, batteries are at 100% still. So the solar panel on the top, I don't think it actually says what specs this solar panel is, but I've discovered it's done brilliantly as far as battery charge goes. So you, um, those, those batteries, although that, you know, I kind of thought, oh, bummer, I wish it just had normal, normal batteries, but in hindsight, I'm glad it doesn't because they have kept this thing. You could leave it out there for months. And if you had it in a better position, perhaps it would charge indefinitely. I haven't done that, so I don't know, but I suspect it um, it keeps up pretty well. And the, it does advertise on the box. It says eco. I mean, I'm not sure on the claim for eco because you know what eco-friendly power supply. It does have. I suppose it's saying eco-friendly power supply because it means the um, you know eco-friendly solar panel. Whether that's eco, I, I don't know. But long battery life, and it does have long battery life. The other specs, it says 4K Ultra HD, 48 megapixel clear daytime and night image. And then it's got the bits on the back. The one thing I would say, and I've checked this, is that the, um, the infrared light on the last one also wasn't very good. Now, when I'm, I mean, if you know this kind of stuff, it's obvious, right? So that bit there is the camera lens. That bit there is the infrared lights. And that bit there is the PIR sensor, so the motion sensor. That's really all there is to it. There's the solar panel on the top, comes with various mounting options, a strap like we had on the last one, and then there's a sort of threaded, threaded bracket it comes with as well. Um, but the, the last time I noticed that this, the other camera scared a fox that we had. And I was like, oh, can they see the infrared lights? And you can. So there's two different light waves or <clears throat> two different wavelengths of light from these. This is the 850 nanometers, which is the longer, <coughs> which is the longer range light. And I think if I was gonna decide it, so there's a long range, there's a short range. The long range is this one, and it's the 850 nanometer. And that means you can see the light a little bit more. The 950, I think, let me just check. Yeah, no, it's 940 is the other one. So the 940 nanometer range is supposed to be a stealth infrared light and it's supposed to be less visible because it, it, it lights up the diode instead of the lens. 
and the 850 lights up the lens as well as the diode. So there was a shot that we got of a deer where this thing startled it. And I think, I mean, it may have startled it because it saw the camera. I mounted it quite low rather than the light, but um, I think they can see. And if it's pitch black at night and a tiny little light lights up, you know, and you're an animal, you would notice that. So, but if I was gonna choose one, those are your two options. I would choose the longer range because it's got 20 meter range. That's what they claim for the lights. The other one, I'm not sure what it has, but it has less range if you have the higher, the, the stealth one. Um, so I think what I would say with that, and I thought about this, and it's probably a good idea anyway, is when you mount this on a tree, or on a post, try and mount it in the opposite direction to the animals traveling. So if the animals are traveling that way, if you mount it like this, the light's not gonna shine in their eyes. Whereas what I did in the first shot is I mounted it perhaps the correct way, although I didn't know, and the animals went away from it and they didn't see it. But in the other one, the water supply was over there and I mounted it here. So as the animal approached, it just glared right in its face. So I think that you've just got to be more sensible with the camera placement rather than, because you know, you're gonna have some kind of light emittance from this anyway, and it's also a strange object in a forest. So I'm not sure you can get around that. And I think it was the right decision going with the, the greater distance infrared rather than the stealth infrared. Um, and I'm sure the stealth, stealth infrared are probably more expensive as well. So there might be that. To turn it on, you just go one more click. So when you open it up, you just, you know, the middle setting I said was set up. It's kind of got a live screen as well, so you can see what's actually going on. And then you just click it one more. It's got a countdown. And then that's on. That's recording now. I have noticed it's recorded me a couple of times as I've been setting it up. So I've kind of, after learning that, just, I mean, it doesn't matter, does it? But I've mounted it first. And the good thing with this mount is you can mount it and then you can open it whilst it's mounted. So you can then turn it on, close it. It's got the countdown so you can kind of stop it from recording your, your hand. This is the strap. And this is a small thing, but I actually found this far easier because it's got a clip. So you thread the other end through, where is it? find the other end. You thread the other end through like that. And then instead of kind of having to tighten it by putting that, you just press the clip down and it clamps on it. So it is a bit, a bit easier to set up. And this is also bigger and it's satisfyingly cheap. Like this is a really funny thing to say, but it's like, if you imagine just a really standard kind of strap, this is it. It's not fancy, it's not got camouflage on it, it's not slightly stretchy, it's just a really cheap, solid strap that's just gonna last you probably forever. It's just, like, it's hard to say, isn't it? Sometimes cheap is cheap, and sometimes cheap is just good. So look at the footage we got. We did get very lucky on this. We ended up with a really nice shot that I just didn't get on the other camera, so, I mean, it's, you have to say, this does look a lot nicer than the other camera, but that's because we got a really lucky shot. So let's have a look. And like I said, I actually clicked on this and right click, properties, check the video resolution and it is 3840 by 20 or 60, so it is 4K footage. But we've got a whole fleet of deer I'm not sure if the fuzzy fuzzy antlers on this are because those are the bucks or because, I mean, they are at the front, aren't they? I've just never seen so many here. There's also audio and you can see the specs at the bottom of the um, camera are, you know, you see the battery at the bottom and you can see the temperature and the time, which helps as well. So this was actually uh, daylight, I think, which is why it's a bit noisy because the one of the night footage actually didn't have so much grain. This is probably in a funny early morning light situation. But the, the audio um, that's recorded as well, in, I think we may have already heard it, there's kind of a crash of somebody jumping on a, a, a metal sheet. So I kept watching, think because I thought this was about it, and I kept watching, and then um, there's a few more that, that sort of follow afterwards. So the audio is also pretty interesting. But you can see the angle we've chosen here is actually behind the animals so they haven't been startled by it whereas if we have a look at the next one it's kind of cause scary when you first see it isn't it because you just see that i was like is that anything is that and then you're like oh wait is it and it moves his ear and you're like okay it is a real 
a lie, you know, it's not some kind of ghost that we've managed to capture. Um, but you can see it's clearly spotted something and you can see the infrared reflected in its eyes. So um, this was poor placement of the camera. I think I probably, there's a trail that you can see moving off to the left, just left of the deer. So that was where I was aiming at, where it runs off down there. Um, but I think it would have been better placed to turn it around and facing the water instead of facing up the trail. But there we go. It gets better. When I was just looking at the footage with you just then, I, I noticed there was another battery icon at the bottom. And I was like, hang on, I've just said it was at full battery the whole time. What's going on here? And I read the... Um, I read the instructions to find out what that was and I wondered if it was some kind of charging state, you know, like if there's power coming in. But, and I think I knew this, there's a, there's a little battery in here, but I thought the battery was for kind of like backup, um, you know, to keep the internals operating so it didn't wipe your data or, you know, to keep the settings stored in it or something. But I realized it actually runs, look, I'm just turning that on. There's no batteries in that and that's on. And it says the internal battery is full. So you can actually use this with no batteries installed. There's none in that at the minute and it's on. However, I would recommend you did put batteries on in this um, because I don't think the battery is gonna be very big. It recommends in the instructions to add batteries, but it uses that internal lithium battery first before it starts depleting your batteries that you've put in there. So this little guy does actually work if you wanted it for one night or something, or it was in a very sunny spot, it does work with no batteries. So you, are, you can actually get this and use it for 40 quid. Um, now it's 40 quid because they've got a discount on there at the minute, which is already applied in the basket. And I only know that because I just went on the computer to go, I'll check how much this actually is. And it was $60. And then when I put it in the basket and went to the checkout, it, it auto applied the discount and came down to like, fifty dollars or something and then i entered my location which is the scottish highlands and then it was five dollars shipping and then when i you know changed that all into pounds it ended up being 43 quid so 43 quid for this thing and it works with no batteries um i've actually been speaking to the battery manufacturers and we've managed to get you guys a five quid discount code for those so if you want to buy the same batteries that i did um that's 15 quid instead of 20 quid which is another winner. And I would, like I say, I would recommend adding that because if I had this out and I just kind of set it up, I really wouldn't want to rely on the internal battery. And it's kind of not designed to be used long-term like that. It, it, that's why it has the big battery slot. So I would recommend, I would recommend adding um, a bigger set of batteries in the back um, if, you, if you want to rely on this. I've also been looking through the instruction manual. There's tons more settings here. Um, also that battery, battery pack comes with battery charger and it takes quite a while to charge but they are pretty big i mean they're 3000 milliwatt hours per battery so they're they're pretty decent batteries so i mean for 15 quid now you can't go wrong it's definitely got to be the cheapest ones on the market so we've got we've got tons more that i haven't gone through and i'm not going to go through it all in detail because there's lots but you've got trigger interval you've got time lapse working hours so you can set it to operate at a certain time um, if you're going to leave this for a long period of time you can set it to work during a certain amount certain time um, so that it doesn't run all the time. You've got auto power off, economy mode, the sensitivity of the motion um, sensor, and then you've got recording length, loop recording, replay mode. I think that's about um, viewing it afterwards. And then we've got the specifications here. So I've actually found the solar is a one watt solar power, and then the built-in lithium um, battery is 2000 milliamp hour at 3.7 watts. So. It's actually a fair size, although you are running a camera here, so you're going to need a decent amount. It's pretty good though, isn't it? There's not much else to say on it. I think you know I love it. It's been uh, it's a cool little thing. I'm definitely going to continue using that. Um, let, me just, let me just get something. So the, the, the link for the batteries is actually slightly different. I've been emailing them whilst recording this and I've got to upload this today. So we're all a bit um, last minute with all of our decisions here, but uh, it seems like we've got five quid off the eight battery pack instead of the four battery pack. So that's 35 pounds instead of 40 quid. So there you go, take it or leave it. Yes, I have just cut my hair in between filming the rest of the video. No, I haven't looked in the mirror. So you're the first people to see if I've got any patches on the sides, but there we go. So you can't go wrong with the X2 Solar Trail camera.
it's just really good value for money. And, and, and in this current climate, I'm finding it really rare that I find something for sale that I actually decide is of good value and, you know, not crazy amounts of amounts of money. This, this is one, this is the first one in a long time, actually, that I've thought that's actually cheaper than I was expecting that to be. Um, and with the EBL batteries, you know, that's a pretty good combination for not a lot of money. So there we go. What I went to go and get is this, okay? Next video, I feel inspired. We're gonna be making our own. Um, it's not gonna be an H camera or a CCTV camera. It's going to be a remote monitoring camera, um, which is really the use case I need here. So I need to see things up the hill. I need to check on sensors. Um, I need to check on the pressures of the hydro. So we're gonna be making our own remote monitoring camera I've already been working on it and it's really satisfying. So if you'd like to come and see that, come join us in the next one. It'd be nice to have you here. We'll see you then.